Hi guys, it's Mrs. Moss here. And where we last left off, we were discussing the rock layers of the earth and how to tell their age. Now we discussed the two laws of horizontality and the law of superposition. And now we're gonna talk about the processes that can affect the laws. Where we last left off, I mentioned that the rock is always older than the process that changed it. Well, what processes can change the rocks? Weathering, metamorphism, faulting, and even an igneous intrusion can change the rock. This igneous intrusion occurred after the rock had originally formed. Sedimentary layers form as flat horizontal layers, and we discussed that in our last screencast, which is known as the law of original horizontality. So anything that occurs within those layers had to have occurred after the layers were deposited. So the fault in this picture came after the rock was formed. In this picture, the tilt of these layers came after the rock was formed. We have folding as well. Again, layers of rock are deposited horizontally. So anytime there's folding or distortion within a rock, that had to have occurred after the rocks were deposited. Processes that can change the order of rock strata. There are four that we're going to look at. Extrusions must be younger or more recent than the strata below it, but older than any layers above it. So in this picture, we have a picture of an igneous intrusion. You can see it right through here. It's the, but first, the layers had to have been formed. So we have first the bottom layer, the orange is the second layer, the striped one is the third layer. Now if you notice, there is a layer on top of that igneous intrusion. However, you also notice that there are no lines along this indicating contact metamorphism. Remember, contact metamorphism occurs when an igneous intrusion comes up and that magma touches the rock and changes it. Well, if there was no contact metamorphism in this top layer, then that means that top tan number six layer was not there when that igneous intrusion came up and hardened. So that event, number four, is when the igneous intrusion came up and it hard touched the rock. That contact metamorphism is event number five. And that means the last event to occur was number six, that sedimentary lock, rock formation that came at the very top. So we look for signs of contact metamorphism because that indicates whether or not a layer or an intrusion came first and which is older and which is younger. In this instance, the extrusion came after the sedimentary rock was formed. So if you notice, this forms at the very top. The um, in igneous intrusion came up and there were no layers on top. So there are no, uh, there's no contact metamorphism occurring there. This came, the bottom came first. Second is the igne uh, middle layer. Third is that stripe layer. The fourth event that occurred was this igneous intrusion came up. And last, the contact metamorphism. Finally, that sixth event occurred, the depo deposition of that top layer. So intrusions are younger, more recent than all the rock layers in the contact with them. In this picture, it's a little different than the picture we just showed you, because in this layer, there is contact metamorphism along the top of the igneous intrusion. So that indicates that this top layer was deposited and last, the igneous intrusion came up and changed the rock around it immediately, known as contact metamorphism. We also look at folds, right? Folds are bends in the rock strata. They can overturn rock strata so that it looks like the older rock lies on top of the younger rock. So it actually defies that law of superposition. But when we see a bend, 
we can tell that the rock has had an event that occurred after the layers were formed. Let's look at this picture in your notes. You see that there's a rock layer and there's a bend. Well, in this instance, it looks as if the younger rock is underneath the older rock. However, we know because of the law that that's not the case. The overturn or the bend in that rock occurred after those rock layers were deposited. The fourth thing we look at are faults, cracks in the rock layer, and they produce offset layers. So if you look at this diagram, you see a, a line going right down the center. This is the fault, and that tells us that the rock layers were formed before the fault occurred. Now this is a picture of a real example of a fault. You can see right here this fault line. And what you can also see is that this gray layer at some point matched up with this gray layer. The law of horizontality tells us that they were horizontal when they were deposited. So the fault came along after the de deposition, after that layer was formed, and cracked it. And it created the layers to be offset from one another. The rock strata must be older than the process that changed it. So that is the most important thing that you should take away from this screencast. Any processes that we see in diagrams occurred after the rock strata or the layers were formed. That means cracks, veins, natural cement are features that were created after the rock or the sediment had been deposited. If rock is composed of fragments, the rock fragments must be older than the rock in which they are found. Let's look at your diagram on your notes. We have a few, like an outcrop. This is known as exposed rock. It's an outcrop. So we ask you, which letter indicates the most recent event? So you have to look carefully and determine which must have come first, second, third, and so on. Well, the top layer F is the youngest in this case. If you look, we can tell that the igneous intrusion came up through the rock layer and hardened at the top of deposition D. Then E indicates contact metamorphism and F was the deposition of the horizontal layer on top of the intrusion. And we know that F came after because there is no contact metamorphism occurring at that spot right along the edge at the top here where the igneous intrusion and letter, layer F meet. Okay? The, a lack of contact metamorphism means that the top layer came after the intrusion in that instance. At which letters would you least likely find a fossil? Think about that. Which case do we know, which type of rock do we know have fossils? Well, all of these layers are known to be sedimentary rocks. The key tells you that right down here. So then where would we least expect to find a fossil? We would look to see letters C and E because that's where the igneous intrusion created the um, contact metamorphism and the metamorphic rock that's going to surround that igneous intrusion. What is the name of the rock found at location B and location C? Now we know this because we have to use our reference table. So I'm going to ask you to hit pause, go get your reference table, and look at the sedimentary rock chart to find the identification of rock B. Once you have your reference table out and you're looking at that sedimentary rock chart, you're going to then look to see what rock layer B will metamorphize into if metamorphize is a word. What will it change into when it undergoes heat and pressure? That's the answer to C. So if you found that location B is sandstone and the metamorphism of sandstone is quartzite, then you're right. We're going to end there and we're going to look further into 
the order of rock layers and how we age rock strata in our next screencast. So I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you got all of the notes down and have a great day. See you next time.